Uh, joining me to discuss the events in Hong Kong, our reporter Laura Westbrook. In fact, you've just had two weeks there following all these massive demonstrations as well, Laura, by and large peaceful. And I just wonder, from what Nick was saying there, how do you think a lot of those people, what was it, two million, coming out to demonstrate peacefully are going to make of a relative handful um, tearing the LegCo uh, apart? I think you're really seeing a new level of anger and violence today. I was, I've been there for two weeks and people I've been speaking to feel an incredible amount of frustration against the government, but also particularly Carrie Lam. She's not been in, seen in public for 10 days. They've been um, protesting peacefully, the biggest protest in Hong Kong's history on that Sunday when I was there. And one protester has said, look, we protested peacefully, we've protested 25% of Hong Kong's population protested. Still, the government's not listening to us. Still, Carrie Lam is ignoring our demands. And I think what we saw tonight is this explosion of this anger and frustration amongst especially the young people in Hong Kong who are like, look, you know, you need to listen to us and we're going to go to this level of violence to make you listen to us. But it will be interesting to see, as, as Nick was saying, that how the wider population in Hong Kong is going to view this because Hong Kong has been called the city of protest and it's always been very peaceful protest and to see young people and demonstrators break into Hong Kong's parliament is mm. really unprecedented and looking at the level of graffiti and you know destruction that's been going on in there is is going to surprise I think a lot of people in Hong Kong. Yeah we heard their message there was more oil more oil come on let's push this through I mean they have other slogans don't they which mm. sort of perhaps help us to understand what they're thinking, what their mentality and approach is. One of the other slogans that's emerged from these protests is Be Like Water. It comes from the Bruce Lee, who's Hong Kong's most famous Kung Fu master, who said, be, more, be water, my friend. And what it shows us is what they have learned from the last protests in 2014, where they occupied the central thoroughfare in Hong Kong for 79 days. This time, they're a lot more fluid. They're, they're a lot more spontaneous. It also makes them a lot more unpredictable. And tonight, what we saw was was these protesters were expecting the police to come in. They were prepared. They had goggles. They had helmets. And when the police did finally clear them, they seemed to retreat. So they'd be like water. They've retreated, I guess, to fight another day. Laura, good to talk to you. I know you know Hong Kong extremely well. There's a politician I know who says you should never judge a demonstration by the number of people who are on the streets, but the number of people who've stayed behind at home and haven't gone out. What level of unrest would you say there is among ordinary Hong Kong people, not the people who were out there with their goggles and kind of ready for action today? Well, I think when you look at that protest where we saw two million people take to the streets, what struck me as someone who's from Hong Kong was that I've never seen that many people protest in Hong Kong in my life. And what we saw was the level of support um, for people who are against this bill, that we saw people, housewives, lawyers. I saw a group of 40 people who use wheelchairs who took to the streets. And everyone I spoke to said, look, we are worried about if this law, if it gets passed, how it would affect me. And I think uh, what is happening, especially with a lot of the young people, is they see 2047 is coming up quite quickly. It's 28 years away. And they are worried about Hong Kong's way of life and how it's changing, and that they are determined to protect the freedoms that Hong Kong has under one country, two systems. Whether the same amount of people who are on the streets back then are supporting the actions of these protesters tonight, uh, that remains to be seen. But the level of support that people have across all sections of Hong Kong society and all ages against this bill, that is still, uh, that is still very much there. And Laura, that gives me the obvious follow-up question, is what is your assessment of how far people are going to be prepared to push this when they know that there's the, every possibility of a repressive crackdown? 
Well, one thing I think we're seeing is that people in Hong Kong, they were very much prepared for a violent crackdown. They had helmets, they had goggles, they were wrapping themselves in cling film. They have been tear gassed before and they weren't afraid to be tear gassed again. It also must be said that a lot of those people who went into the LegCo, they are facing, if this is called, a, if this is termed a riot, they are facing 10 years in prison. So a lot of people have been saying they're risking their future future um, for Hong Kong um, and, 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 and for against this bill, um, which uh, for, for young people in Hong Kong, who's, uh, the, the impression we get of them is studious people, they, you know, they're, they're quite quiet, for them to risk their futures like this, I think that gives you a sense of the anger and, frust and frustration on the streets of Hong Kong. Absolutely. A lot of them saying this is an existential moment for them. Laura, thank you very much indeed.